What's up everyone and thanks for joining me again this week. About a year ago, I built this app to track volleyball scores in the pickup leagues that I play in. It not only keeps track of scores, but also who paid and who owes what amount of money. Um, and it's been really useful for the past year, but there's a lot of new features that I kind of want to add to it. And since I'm getting into the code again um, and to add all these new features, I decided maybe I should rethink my data storage strategy. So today the app uses Azure SQL database to store all of its data, but I'm rewriting it to use Azure's NoSQL table storage. And as part of this process of switching from a relational SQL database to a NoSQL database, I thought I would go over and share kind of what my considerations were for making the switch and when you might consider doing it yourself. So first off, having this app use Azure SQL on the back end um, has been great, right? I've had no problems with it. It's done everything I've needed to do. It's been familiar to me, so it's been easy to use. Uh, but there are a couple reasons why I want to switch. So the main reason is the $5 a month cost for Azure SQL. It's not a prohibitive cost, but the idea of this app is I'm using it for free to run my leagues and there's people that want to be able to use it for their leagues um, and I want to be able to offer it to them for free uh, uh, for the time being. I don't want to be stuck with this $5 a month fee. Ideally, I want the fraction of a penny that I'm rounding uh, to kind of square up the bill for all the players in a league to be able to cover the costs of the app itself. And while $5 a month for Azure SQL, I think is a very fair price for what it offers, um, it's too high for the constraints of this particular project I'm working on. And there are other Azure SQL options, right? There's Azure SQL Serverless, which you can pay for only the, the amount of time that your compute uh, is actually running for, but running the pricing calculators, it still adds up to be a little bit more than what I want. So that's why I went with Azure Table Storage. Azure's NoSQL Table Storage is by far the cheapest way to store the data that I need um, in Azure. And so that's why I'm going with it, right? It really is going to cost me pennies per month, per year uh, to, to keep the data I need. So that is the kind of level of commitment I'm willing to pay for this. Another consideration for choosing table storage specifically um, was that it's it's simple. Cosmos DB is the alternative, right? That Microsoft kind of pushes and it has lots of really cool features. The thing is for this really small app that I'm using, I don't need all those really cool features. Having the availability and redundancy across multiple regions and the ability to index lots of different properties um, while great features, is those are just, they're just overkill for my little application. So since price and features kind of drove me to table storage, now I wanna talk about some of the constraints uh, that I've experienced so far while refactoring into table storage coming from a more relational SQL world. First off, the primary keys in Azure table storage consist of two columns. It's a composite key on a partition key and row key. And that's also what the clustered index is on. And so whenever you need to find data that is indexed by that clustered key, right? Data retrieval is very fast. Um, but the downside is that that is your only index available for the table. It's not like I feel like I can't get things to perform well. I just have to really be considerate of my design and how each page of my application is querying the data that it needs so that it's able to retrieve it quickly. Once again, if I need more indexes, Cosmos DB maybe would have been a better option, but I wanted to stick with this. And this is super important because the way the partitioning kind of schema works in table storage is that different partition values can be stored on totally different servers. So if you do things correctly in, in defining and designing your tables, uh, you'll get you know parallelism across multiple servers and things run fast. It becomes a problem if you end up poorly defining uh, your clustered index keys and you end up having to you know bottleneck on one server or have it, having to go to multiple different servers to get all the data you need for you know one page. Another thing you have to consider when designing these Azure table storage tables is latency. If you are going with the cheapest option, I believe you're limited to just the one region, one data center that you're um, you know you specified when creating the table, and that's fine, right? If you're only using your app from a very small area of the world, if you have users around the world, not the best option. Once again, go check out Cosmos DB. But for my purposes, choosing the East region region here for Azure uh, works great because that's the one closest to me and I am the only one using the app and a couple other people from my area. 
but that latency also becomes an important issue because you can't really join data in table storage. That is, you can query the data into your app and join it in your app layer, but you can't join data from different tables in Azure itself. That's a really big design consideration because for a given page, right, I wanna make as few calls to my table storage as possible. This is where you really have to change your mindset about how you store your data because ideally you just wanna make one query to get that data. You don't wanna to have to make five different queries, right, that join the data together um, to get the full picture because that is gonna be slow. This is where a lot of the hate for NoSQL comes from because you're storing these, these massive, you know, blobs of data where it, in, you know, in our relation minds it would make sense to split that up across multiple tables but if you want that cheap storage and fast access you have to redesign your app to make it work that way and this makes sense for my app because I'm not really doing any analytics on this it's a very operational app it just tells you what you need to know about who owes what money to who and I, I think I can I can get that working in this NoSQL kind of design without sacrificing too much Another thing to be aware of is that one row of data is limited to one megabyte of space. So even though I'm gonna be appending blobs of everything I need to my table, uh, I need to be very careful not to exceed or even get close to that one megabyte limit per row um, because uh, that'll just become a whole big problem down the road. Another related limitation is that one table can only have 252 columns of data in it. I don't foresee having any trouble with that constraint at all, um, but it is something to consider, right? If you're building your app, you can't just have infinite key value pairs per row. Um, you are constrained by 252 columns and one megabyte of data total. And so there are other things to consider as well, like consistency, right? If we were spreading across multiple regions or things like that, um, you know, is our data gonna be in sync or not? But that's really out of scope for my app. Like I mentioned, I'm right now, I'm only using it with a small group of people local to my one area, so I'm not worried about it. And so that's it, right? This NoSQL kind of storage solution, while maybe seeming really the wrong way to go about things, right? If you're coming from that relational mindset, because um, it is weird, you know, storing giant chunks of data together just feels wrong, but it really is the cheapest way to store your data if that's what you're going for. It's really the only model where you pay exactly for what you use and nothing more, at least of the time of making this video. So hopefully you enjoyed this overview of the things to consider when potentially choosing a NoSQL storage solution. I'd be curious to know if you are using any NoSQL in your development work today, and if this type of video is interesting to you. So thanks again for watching this week. If you're not already a subscriber, be sure to subscribe so you never miss one of these videos, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.